So if you have two graphs or two functions, f of x and g of x, I want to show you how you can determine what the graph of the quotient graph looks like. And it doesn't resemble a lot of what the original graphs look like, but it's going to be important because it's going to enable us to graph tan x, because that's equal to sine x over cosine x, and it'll also enable us to graph cotan x, which is cosine x over sine x. And the problem with quotient graphs, imagine I have, here's two graphs, just some kind of thing like that. And for g of x, maybe something simpler. And if I want to sort of put these two graphs together into a quotient graph, um, f of x over g of x, a couple of things to observe. One is that anytime f of x is 0, f of x over g of x is also going to be 0. So these points, at least those three, that's one thing I know for sure. Anytime g of x is 0, the quotient graph is going to be undefined. So I'll just put like a line there. But other than that, it's pretty complicated. Like, there are some things you could say, like, yeah, I'm just going to go like that for a second. So to the right of this point here, we could definitely say that both f of x and g of x are both positive. So definitely there's going to be, like, something going on over here. Whereas in between these two points, f of x is negative, but g of x is positive. So there's going to be something going on that's negative, because you divide negative divided by positive. But it just gets a little difficult to analyze. Another thing that is important is what happens near this vertical asymptote. So if I'm at a point, let's just say like over here, well for one thing, the f of x has a positive y value at that point, and the g of x has a negative y value. But the g of x value is getting really close to zero, so when you divide something that's not that close to zero, by something that is close to zero. In this case, they look like they're about the same distance, but if I get even closer, I can get this guy really close to zero. Well, this guy is not as close to zero. Maybe it's like 3, and this is like 0 0.0001. Well, 3 divided by 0 0.001 is 3,000. So, but it's going to be negative 3,000 because this is negative 0 0.001 down here. So we end up with that going on. So it, we have the asymptote, but it kind of approaches it that way. These are just some ideas. I'm going to specifically use um, the tangent graph to, to illustrate what's going on here. So here the blue is the graph of y equals sine x, and the red is y equals cosine x. And I want to graph tangent y equals sine x. And the first observation is that any time the blue is 0, the um, quotient is also going to be 0. I'll make that green. As long as they're not both 0, which there is no place where they're both 0. On the other hand, any time the red is 0, it's going to be undefined. And the red is 0 a bunch of places. Now, what happens in between? I'll use a different color here. Use black, actually. So, what happens? What else happens besides these points is maybe a little bit confusing. First thing I want to you notice is that in this section right here, the red and the blue are both above the x-axis, so the quotient is going to be positive. So, the tangent is going to be in all in this sort of section up here. Now, when when sine of x is close to zero, something really close to zero, like 0 0.001, cosine is close to 1, so like 0 0.99. That's going to be pretty close to zero. So tangent starts off pretty low. Uh, you'll notice an important point is there's a spot where, tan, where sine and cosine are equal to each other. It's not even, it's actually squared root 2 over 2. 
But at that point, the quotient's going to be at 1. So we have like that going on. And then, when I get really close to 90, the sign, the blue, is close to 1. Maybe 0.9, let's say. But the red is close to 0, like 0 0.01. And that becomes like 90, and that's why we get this going on. Now let's look at what happens between 90 and 180. Notice that the um, the blue, which is sign, is above the x-axis, but the red is below the x-axis. So that means that when we divide them, we're going to get something negative. Now, for points just to the right of 90, what we see is that the blue is really close to 1, and the red is really close to 0. And something really close to 1, like 0 0.9, over negative something really close to 0, like 0 0.1, whoops, would just be 9, would be negative 9, sorry. And that's why we have something like this. Now remember, it does have to get to this 0 point here, so we have something like this. It's like half a parabola. Now between 90 and 270, notice how they're both below the x-axis, which means the um, quotient is going to be positive. Negative divided by negative is positive. See this point here where they cross? That's going to correspond to a point of 1 because they're equal to each other, so the quotient is 1. And when you get a point really close to 270, the blue is really close to like negative one, and the red is really close to zero to, to negative zero. Oh, sorry, it's close to zero, but it's negative, so it becomes like positive nine up here somewhere. And that's why you have that. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, again you have the red is is above the x-axis, the blue is below, so we're going to have um, it's going to be negative. And when I'm really close to 270, some point like over here, the blue is really close to negative 1, the red is really close to positive 0, so we end up with something like this. And that's the graph of tangent. Now, because tangent, because sine and cosine repeat, the tangent repeats also, and we end up with this collection of these sort of half parabola and then another half a parabola. As you can see, the period of a tangent curve is actually 180, even though the periods of sine and cosine are 360. Now we can do a similar thing for cotangent, but now the cosine is the numerator, so which is the, the red, so when that's zero, when the red is zero, cotan will be zero. When the blue is zero, we're going to get asymptotes. Now it gets a little bit confusing here. Um, in this first quadrant, they're equal at this spot, but that's not where it, that means that. If they're equal, if sine and cosine are equal, then the cotangent is going to be 1. And basically, really close to 0, you're going to have it, we're going to do red, it's red over blue this time. So red's real close to 1, blue's real close to 0, so that's a really large number, so we get the asymptote there. In quadrant, uh, between 90 and 180, this is going to happen. And here they're both negative, which makes it a positive when you divide. And here one's positive, one's negative. So these two things are they're kind of similar, and people get confused about them sometimes. With the cotangent ones kind of have like a, almost like a negative slope, whereas the tangent ones kind of had a positive slope. 
and they have different y-intercepts and different asymptotes. 